Hey everybody, this is Mr. Longo here and we are going to talk about binomial distribution. Um, so what a binomial distribution does is it shows the probabilities of the outcomes of a binomial experiment. So then I'm guessing you're wondering what a binomial experiment is. And it's an experiment that meets three criteria. There has to be n number of independent trials. So there cannot be any dependent trials, it's all independent. And each trial has only two outcomes, success or failure. So that's like yes or no. I like, I don't like. Um, and then the probability of success is always going to be the same for each trial. That's like flipping a coin ten times. Your probability for success is always going to be one half. Um, and they will always, the probability for success and failure will always add up to one. So the formula is probability of k successes is n choose k times probability for success that's what p stands for so p to the k times probability for failure or 1 minus the probability of success to the n minus k so your exponents are always going to add up to the number of the number of people surveyed or something like that and we're going to do a word problem so it all makes more sense. So what we're going to do is ask the class how many students like sushi. And since this is a video and we're not sitting in a classroom, I made up some responses. And I made up the fact that 12 students like sushi and 8 do not. Um, so what is the percent of students that like sushi? Well, if we have 20 total students, then... 12 divided by 20 would give us 0.6 or 60%. And 8 would give us 40%. So that's just a survey of 20 people. Now, that's not a very large survey, so the results might be skewed depending on certain situations. But for the purpose of this example, 60% of students like sushi and 40% do not. Okay, so according to a survey conducted by me, about 6% or 60% of students enjoy sushi. Suppose that we're going to randomly survey six other students. What's the probability that exactly two of them enjoy sushi? So P is going to be 0.6. We don't use 60%. We use the decimal value. So 0.6 is going to be the probability that a random student enjoys sushi. So if we're going to survey six students, you conduct n. n is the number surveyed. So that would be six in this case because we said six students. If we said eight students, n would be eight. And then the probability of getting k, that would be our two. So we want to know exactly two of them enjoy sushi. What's the probability that two enjoy sushi? That's our two. That's our k value. Okay, so let's show you how the formula works. Now, we could do this by hand, but that would just take way too long. So we're going to use our calculator. So the formula would be choosing two out of six survey. So six choose two, where six is the number that we are surveying and two is our outcome for success, times our probability for success is 0.6 raised to k, that would be 2, times our probability of failure. So that's 1 minus 0.6, which we know is 0.4. And then that's raised to 4, because it would be 6 minus 2. And then we just need to type that in our calculator. Now you can type each one of these in. 6 choose 2 would give us 15, uh, 0.6 squared would give us 0 0.36, 0 0.4 to the 4th power would give us 0 0.0256, or you can just type it in your graphing calculator all in one shot. Now, depending on which kind of operating system you have on your calculator, we'll change the buttons you push a little bit. Um, so we're just going to go do our math and slide over to probability. And remember, n choose r is number 3, where our number is 6, 
and our success is 2. And then we're going to multiply that by 0 0.6 squared. And then we're going to multiply that by 0.4 raised to the fourth power. Click enter, and we get 0.138. So 13.8%, um, but for probability, we're going to leave these as decimals. So 0.138 is the probability that we would select two that like sushi. Okay? Um, when surveying six people, of course. So what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to create a histogram using this. Now, what we're going to do is what we just did for choosing exactly two. So we already know two is 0.138. Um, but we're going to come up with a histogram with a binomial distribution for zero students being selected that like sushi, or one, two, three, four, five, or all six that like sushi. Now you have to remember, 60% of students in one survey enjoy sushi. So what if we were to go ask other random students in the school, and we're going to pick six, ra six random students, what are, are the results that we can expect to get? So to do this, you would have to do the exact same formula. I'm going to show you a little shortcut with your graphing calculator, and we're only going to do a couple of these, and then I'll just fill out the rest because it's just typing the same thing over and over and over. But remember, to bring up what you last typed, you would just press second, enter. But what we're going to do is k is now 0. So that would be 6 choose 0 times 60% success, which is 0, times 40% failure raised to the 6th power. These two exponents will always add up to 6 for this problem, but for any other problem, it's n. They will always add up to n. So then, just go change what you need to. So this exponent is 6, and you would just scroll all the way back, and this exponent is 0, and then you have to go all the way back to 6, choose 0, and then you click Enter, and you're going to get 0 0.004, okay? And once you do all of that, um, you would just have to do it again for the next one. So this would be 6, choose 1, times 0.6 raised to 1, times your failure raised to 5, equals. And then again, like I said, you can just press 2nd, Enter. You can go change this guy to a 5. You can go all the way back over and change the 0 to a 1. And go make that 6 choose 1. Click Enter, and we get 0 0.037. So we have 0 0.037 is the probability that if we survey 6 students, that one of them, only one of them out of the six, likes sushi. Okay, now, we're not here to watch me press buttons on a calculator the entire time. So if you were to go change this to 6 choose 3, times 0 0.6 to the 3, times 0 0.4 to the 3, you would end up with 0.276. And then 4 would give you... 0.311, 5 would give you 0.187, and 6 would give you 0 0.047, okay? And of course, 2 was 0.138. Now, if you were to add all of those up, they'd have to give you 1, because remember, the probability of success and failure has to add up to 1. Well, this is with six different students. So that's how you do a binomial distribution by hand. Now, in the next video, I'm going to show you how to do all of that using your graphing calculator. 
but you have to know how to do it by hand to appreciate how awesome your calculator is. So, how do we create a histogram? Um, well, the histogram is going to be our survey, basically our results broken down so it's easier to read. And remember, this was if we were to go randomly survey six students, what's the probability that zero students like sushi? One student likes sushi. And then you have two, three, four, five, six. And then obviously we go up to six because we're only going to go survey six students. And then this over here, so this would be like students enjoy sushi out of six surveyed. And then this would be like the percent or the probability that they like it. And what you need to do is just kind of draw some little bar graphs. So zero was 0 0.004. Now these are obviously not going to be perfect, but you're just going to try to, your graphing calculator can give you a better idea or computer software, but you're not going to be able to draw these perfectly. So just get close. Um, the probability that one student selected was 0 0.037. So that's 0 0.037. Um, two jumped all the way up to 0.138. Now notice mine aren't perfect. I don't expect yours to be perfect either. Three jumped all the way up to 0.276. And then our biggest one was four. So most likely to occur is if you survey six random students, um, four of them are going to like sushi according to the results of the first survey. And then once we get to five, we're going to drop, drop back down to 0.187. And finally, six is 0 0.047. So again, mine's not perfect, but it gets the point across of the, the more likely it is, the higher it gets. So, I mean, obviously, the smallest possible occurrence would be zero like it. Um, so, let's just go use this to answer a couple of questions then. So, if we were to just use our original survey results, 60% of students like sushi. That means 40% do not. So, if we were to just walk up to any six random kids in the school, what is most likely to occur? Well, most likely to occur would be for students like sushi. Now, of course, that's out of six students. So if we change this to like surveying 10 students, that would change everything. So all of these results are just based on the original that we're going to go survey six more students assuming 60% enjoy it. What's the least likely to occur? Well, since more than half the student population enjoys sushi according to a survey, the least likely to occur would be zero students. And then what is the probability that at least four people surveyed like sushi? So it said at least four. So that means, what's the probability that four, five, or six students like sushi? That would just be four plus five plus six in terms of students. So the probability of four was 0 0.311 plus the probability of five was 0 0.187 and the probability of 6 was 0 0.047. So that would equal 0 0.545. So the probability that 4, 5, or 6 students like sushi would be 0 0.545. You just have to add up the individuals. Okay? Um, so that's it. That's how you do binomial distribution by hand. Um, we're going to go redo this exact same question in another video where I'm just going to show you how to use your graphing calculator
to do this section. So your graphing calculator can actually do that entire thing. Um, but this video is already long enough. We are going to save that for the next video. So this is Longo and I'm out. See you, bye.